So let's go on to our next cache optimization technique. So we've talked about multi-level caches. Almost all processors today have multi-level caches. And uh, this is good. It's going to reduce our miss rate. Um, and for at least the lower level cache, it's effectively going to miss the re reduce the miss penalty because it's going to be able to go to a closer cache versus having to go out to main memory. What's our, what's our new technique here? Well, the next technique I wanted to introduce is what we call a victim cache. And why do we call this thing a victim cache? Well, a victim is a cache line which is being evicted from your cache. Hmm. Okay, so this victim or this evicted line or evicted uh, cache block, typically it's going, if it's dirty, it has to be written back out to main memory. If it's clean, um, you can just invalidate it and not have to write it back. But what the insight of the victim cache is, is that we're going to keep around the most recent victims or the most recent uh, cache lines that we've casted out of our cache and keep them in a special little side structure that we're going to call a victim cache. And this, this side structure, this victim cache, is going to be very, very, very small. Now, why is, why is this useful? Well, one of the things that is pretty common is that you're going to have a piece of code which, for instance, writes the same set in the cache. So let's say we have a uh, four-way, no, let's say we have a two-way set associative cache. So there's only two sets per index, or uh, two ways per index, excuse me. So we go look at the, the, the two ways, and let's say we have a loop where we read two values from a, uh, an array, and we write it to a third array. So let's take a look at a piece of code that says something like the following. For i uh, 0, i less than some big number, i plus plus. And then let's say we have three arrays, which are all large. So let's say we have an array, an integer array, a, and this is, let's say, a million, one million. We have an integer array B, which is also 1 million, and an integer array C, which is also 1 million. And we'll say that this is 1 million, uh, uh, the 1 million, which is basically 1,000 by 1,000, so it's a, it's a power of 2. Okay, in our for loop here, we're going to have a simple loop. The loop's going to say C of i equals A of i plus b of i. And that's our loop. Now we have a two-way set associative cache. Hmm. Well, that's, that, that, that sounds like a problem here. So if you go look at this, what we're actually going to do is we're going to pull in a. We're going to do a load of a. And this is going to have, let's say, the same index in the cache because we have the same index into this array here, and if, those ca if these three arrays, A, B, and C, are all aligned or naturally aligned, they're going to basically hit the same place, and you're going to have a conflict with B, which is going to have a conflict with C. So C of I, A of I, and B of I all want to fight for those two ways in our cache at the same index, at the same time, every loop iteration. Now, why is this bad? Well, we're iterating here based on integers, or our cache line is bigger than integers. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull in the cache line, let's say, that has A of I on it. Then we're going to pull in the cache line that has B of I on it. And then we're going to evict one of these two to fill it in, uh, because we need to do a write to C of I, which is in the same index in our cache. So we're going to fight there. We have three things trying to fit into two locations. And to make matters worse here, the next time we go around this loop, we could have actually just hit on that same cache line, A, B, and C's cache line, because 
Uh, an integer is smaller than, let's say, our 64-byte cache line here. So the integer is, let's say, four bytes, and our cache line is 64 bytes long. We could have gotten spatial locality and temporal locality here, but instead, we got nothing. We, we just lost. Uh, because we have three things trying to fit into two, and if, even if you use something like least recently used, it's actually going to do the wrong thing here. Least recently used is going to continually kick out the least recently used thing, but the next time around the loop, you want that least recently used thing. So you could actually have done better here if you didn't use least recently used, but instead just, let's say, kept A and B and always cache missed on C or something like that, or pegged one of the two into the, one of these three into the cache for a two-way set associative cache. Okay, so how do we go about solving this? So let's go back uh, and take a look at the, the slide here, and we're gonna see that what we can do is we can have a victim cache which is hooked up to our level one data cache, and this victim cache is going to have effectively extend our associativity on a very limited subset of the lines, or a very limited subset of the indexes into our cache. So if we take a look at this, let's say we have a fully associative cache here for recently evictively lines, maybe four entries. And in fact, actually, the, the original paper which showed this, uh, they had even, let's say, one cache line worth of victim cache, and it helped performance. Um, but this relatively small number of entries here for a victim cache can extend the associativity of any index in the cache line. So it's a fully associative cache added into our cache miss uh, design. And how does this go about working? Well, now when you go to access the level one cache here, if you miss in your level one cache, you pull it in from your level two cache, but you first go and check the victim cache. Now, how do things get into the victim cache in the first place? Well, when you go and try to invalidate something out of your level one cache, instead of just taking that and throwing away that data, you transfer it over into the victim cache. So it's a little cache of most recently evicted lines uh, from our level one data cache, or most recently invalidated lines from our level one data cache. So it adds some extra associativity. Now you can check this either in parallel or in serial with your level one cache. And uh, there's a couple design questions that come up here is on a level one uh, miss, and let's say it misses in the victim cache, what, what goes about happening here? Well, you're gonna be bringing in a new line from the level two cache. You're gonna take what was in the level one cache you're gonna move it into the victim cache, and you wanna go check this on future cache accesses that miss in the level one cache. But the question is, what happens with the victim cache? Well, just like a normal cache, if it's dirty data, you probably want to uh, go write that back to the L2 cache. Alternatively, you can make the victim cache effectively write through. And in fact, usually these sort of victim cache designs, they typically try to make the victim cache write through because then you don't have to worry about when the victim cache uh, gets, uh, uh, something has to get removed from the victim cache where it has to go. You don't actually have to go and do the write back to low, uh, the farther levels of cache. Instead, you can just basically throw it away. So, but that's a design decision. You can decide whether you want the, that level of uh, victim cache to always be clean or dirty. Um, Thankfully, usually if you're doing the evict, you might have enough extra bandwidth in your L2 here to actually just do the right into the L2 at that point and leave the victim cache completely clean. So to recap, the basic idea here is you can add a couple extra ways, if you will, or a little bit of extra associativity for a very limited set of the indexes in your cache here by adding this victim cache. The downside here is you might have to go check this victim cache if you do this serially, it might add to your uh, latency out to the L2, or you could think about checking it in parallel, which would potentially increase power or the energy used, but not hurt performance. Okay, let's pull up the scoreboard and see how, our, how adding a victim cache helps. So first thing we're gonna see is that the miss penalty to our uh, level one cache is going to be decreased here because we've effectively added an extra structure here which is gonna be closer, let's say, than our level two. 
so our missed penalty is going to be lower. But the other advantage of a victim cache is that the miss rate out of the aggregate level one cache plus victim cache together is now going to be lower. So this is going to be better from a miss rate perspective. 